Today we are going to be looking at uh, the Sabrosa assignment. And in this assignment in Excel, we are going to look at how you can use absolute cell references, how you can use multiplication and addition in your formulas. And finally, we are going to look at how you can take the information from a cell in one worksheet and have it automatically appear and update in a second worksheet within the same workbook. So let's get going. Here we have our starter data file. So the first thing we need to do is save this. So come up here to File and save a copy. I'm just going to put mine on my desktop so that I can find it later. And you just want to put your last name after Sabrosa menu order. If you get the yellow bar across the top, make sure you enable editing before you start trying to do anything else. So we can see we have a menu from Sabrosa. We've got a lot of our menu items already. We've got our price and we know what our quantity is. Well, now we need to determine our sales tax. Our sales tax information, as you can see, is located in E2. It's an 8% sales tax. In order to determine the sales tax, we first need to take our price and multiply it by quantity. Take that information and multiply that by 8%. How would we do that in Excel? We need to create a formula. So I'm going to make D4 my active cell. I have to say equal so Excel knows I'm getting ready to enter a formula. Now we want to make sure that the price and quantity is done together. So to do that, we need to put parentheses around them. So I'm going to put an open parentheses. I want this 299 multiply it by the 15 and put a close parenthesis. Always use your cell reference instead of a static number when you are working with formulas in Excel. So here we have what our cost would be, our price times our quantity. Now we need to multiply that by our sales tax, 8%. And then you can hit enter. So our sales tax for this is 359. Now I want to copy this down so I have my sales tax on all of my items. So I'm going to come up here, make D4 my active cell, and then copy it down. But look what happens. I get zeros. Well, now we know sales tax never equals zero. So what happened? What did we do wrong in our formula? Let's take a look at our formula here in E4. E2 is where our sales tax is. Now remember when you put formulas in Excel, it puts them in as relative values. So when you copy them down, your cell will change relative to the row or column that you're copying it to. So down here in D5, I have B5 times C5, which is the correct price and quantity for that row. But then it goes down to E3, and there isn't anything in E3. If I move on down to row 6, you can see the same things happened. It's B6 times C6, which is correct, but now it's going to E4, and there's nothing there. And, of course, we know anything times 0 is 0. So we need to do something in this first cell that tells Excel, always go back to E2. Don't care where I copy this formula at, always refer back to E2. In other words, we are going to make E2 an absolute value. To do that, I'm going to put my insertion point right up here, in front, just behind the E2. And on my keyboard, on my function keys, I can hit my F4 key. And that's automatically going to put a dollar sign E, dollar sign 2. 
If you were using a laptop, the function keys on your keyboard might have two different options on them. So you might have to look for an FN key to toggle your function keys around to see if it's going to be a function key or maybe it's going to do something like increase the sound on your computer. But you can always just put that dollar sign in before the column, dollar sign before the row. So now if I enter that in here, you see my price is still the same, my sales tax. That didn't change it. But look what happens now when I go to copy the formula down. Now everything copied down because E2 is always referred to in each of these cells. The next thing we want to do on here is we want to determine our total. Now here in our total, what we want to do is we want to determine our price and our quantity, but then we want to add the sales tax. So to do that, again, we're going to enter a formula and I'm going to have to put my price and quantity in parentheses. So open parentheses. I've got B4 times C4 plus my sales tax. I don't have to do anything with absolute value because I'm just going to copy this down and I want the formula to copy down. So now I have $48.44 and I want to copy this formula down, clear down to the bottom of my table. And let's see, aha, don't want to copy it all the way down. Because see down here at the total, it's not zero, but that's because it's taking B15 and B C15. So I'm going to hit my delete key here. And for this one, E15, I just need to come up here and do an auto sum. And let's make that bold. So as you can see, I have all of my totals here for my individual items. And then I have an overall total for my entire order. So here in our workbook, you can see we have a menu order worksheet and we also have a catering invoice. Now the catering invoice is just an overall invoice showing just the basic items. So we have our paper items, our rental equipment, and then a fee for our services. And then we have our menu items. So we want the information from our menu order, our total from our menu order, and we want it to come over to our catering invoice. So to do that, here in our catering invoice, I'm going to hit the equals key. Now I'm going to come back to my menu order and open it up and come here to E15 where my total is for my menu order. And now I'm going to hit and select that cell, then hit enter. You can see it brings that 655 over here to my catering invoice. And I already had a formula in here to be 18% of my menu items for my service fees. Now, what's really awesome about this is that this cell here in B3 is linked to our menu order. So you can see it's 65507 right now. If I come back into my menu order, and if I need to change an item, like they only wanted 10 of these beverages, change that to a 10. Once I hit the enter key, you can see the sales tax automatically updated, my total for the item updated, and my total for my worksheet updated. Come back here to the catering invoice, and it also automatically updated. So it's really, once you, once you get your spreadsheet set up with your formulas, you don't have to go back in and mess with the formulas again. You just need to come in and change your static information and it will automatically update. So that's the Sabrosa menu order. So if you're following along and doing this for my class, this is where you can save it and submit this for grading. I hope you've learned some new things about Excel and about using absolute value compared to 
relative value in your formulas and how you can take one cell information from one worksheet to another worksheet in Excel. Thank you for joining me here on Linda's Take. If you please would subscribe to my channel and if you like my video hit the like button. Reach out if you have any questions and I hope that wherever you are it's been a wonderful day.